And there you guys have it, fully custom installed. It's locked in there, it's not going anywhere. It came out pretty clean. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Taco Rick channel. My name is Rick, or DJ Rick Webb, as you guys know me from my other main YouTube channel. In the last modification video for the Taco, we uh, put these right here, which are the OEM style tailgate bed light. Pretty awesome. Took forever, it was a pain in the butt, but they're in. I like them, I enjoy them, it's all good. Today we have what I hope to be a little bit of an easier install. Um, this should be a lot easier. It should only take maybe an hour or less to do. We're going to be installing a trailer brake controller for my taco. So this is a full TRD off-road uh, taco. It has the trailer package already built into it. But what a lot of people don't understand is trucks don't always have brake controllers. Which means your electronic brakes on your trailer uh, may not actually be working. So a lot of the Chevys, the Dodges, and a few of the trucks that are typically normally towing, uh, they have, if you get a trailer package, normally the tra trailer brake controller is built into either the dash settings or there's maybe some levers on the left-hand side of the thing. On the Tacos though, they do not have brake controllers built into the actual truck. They don't come with them. So if you want to actually activate and use your trailer brakes on your trailer, you need to buy a trailer brake controller to activate those brakes. So I bought the Takancha P3, very popular one on the internet for people to buy. Because I have the trailer package or the trailer package already hooked up, it means that all of my trailer wiring is already done for this. So all we're gonna be doing is literally just plugging in an end connector for this and uh, plugging it straight into the factory wire loom. So there's just a plug up underneath the dash that we are gonna plug into. We're gonna find somewhere to mount this, which I already have a spot picked out. And uh, it should be very simple. So now let me go show you what we're gonna be doing on the inside of the taco and then we will get started. So we are underneath the front driver's side. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be moving this trim piece right here, which requires us to actually remove this trim piece as well. But uh, the plug is actually back underneath of here. I actually look for the plug the last time we were doing the bed light installs when we were uh, wiring into the factory wiring here. I found out where it is underneath here. So it should be very simple. My plan is to obviously hook it in here and I want to mount it in this slot here. So we're going to basically take this cup out of here and mount the p3 in here a lot of people on the internet that have tacos put it right here inside of this component right here it fits perfectly inside there so that's what we're going to be doing so i got to figure out how to actually take this bottom dash piece out so that we can get in behind here and we can run our wiring up through here so that is my first task but now let me show you everything we're going to be using for this install so this is everything i think i'm going to need i'll probably need some screwdrivers and maybe a socket set which i have back here depending on how the trim removal process works on the inside of the vehicle but as far as i know right now one we're gonna need the p3 kit which comes with the uh Takancha right here this is what's gonna be mounted in there we get the bracket for it which is back here it's a two-piece bracket and it also has the screws to screw it in not sure if we're going to be using that necessarily because it's going to slip down in that slot there. It comes already with a wiring harness that's just with the ends cut off so you can make your own connections. But Takancha actually sells the specific wiring kit that I need for uh, the OEM wiring harness inside of the taco. So I picked up that as well. So basically I picked up the wiring harness and the P3 and all that is listed in the description down below. The only tools necessarily are going to probably be my plastic removal tools. So these are trim plastic removal tools. Uh, I will link them in the description down below as well. Give you a little case for the Deconcha. Um, I don't know if that's because some people just unplug this when they're not using it or what, but mine's gonna be mounted permanently in there. So let's get started. First thing to remove is this plastic piece down here. It, uh, you can actually just pop it off with your hands. I like to use my tools as well though help get underneath of this panel. This is the first piece right here. Pops out nice and simply. The next piece down here, there's a thumb screw. And after you undo the thumb screw, all you gotta do is just pull it right out. And now we have access to where we need. So now we got that available, we can see all of our wiring. We can see right down here where we tapped in our bed lights originally. Now, for you guys that have the factory trailer package from the factory, I'm going to show you guys where the actual like plug-in is it's actually tucked in back behind here so that right there is our connector that we're going to connect 
our trailer brake controller too. So like I said, next steps are to figure out how to remove this bottom dash. There are a couple screws down here, so I'm gonna start by removing those screws and see where we go. So to be able to get this piece off right here, there were three screws in total. So there was the two screws, the one right there, the one right there, and then there was a third one down here, which was just a 10 millimeter bolt, which is right there. So I got a 10 millimeter socket to either 10 mil or it's also a Phillips head. So you can just take those out for screwdriver. And I have access to the whole entire area now so that we can figure out how to mount this up. Some people online were saying you gotta take this actual compartment out because the Takancha is too long. So I'm going to size up how big it is and how well it fits in this compartment here. On a side note, it does not fit at all. It will not go in, so we're gonna have to remove the actual box itself. Like I said, the Deconcha will not fit at all in there, so we're gonna have to remove this box. It looks simple. There is two Phillips screws on this side and two Phillips screws on this side that hold it. So I'm gonna undo those screws and that box should pop off pretty easy. So like I said, very simple, just four screws takes it right out. I end up on undoing some of these factory harnesses, that way it laid down a little bit easier. Um, it's very easy to put all these back. So after messing with this Deconcha, basically all I did was I shoved it through, and then the next step was I attached the bracket onto it, and then if you kinda like push it forward, you can lock this clip on the back of the Deconcha into the rail right here, and this thing is pretty sturdy in there. It will not go anywhere, and this fits perfectly up here when you put it all in so I really like that next I'm going to hook up the wiring harness put it all together and we should be good to go right here is the wiring harness we have the clip right here that goes into the OEM port we have this which goes into the back of the Deconcha right here and we also have a ground screw so we're gonna have to hook this up to the ground bolt which is on the left hand side I'll show you guys where that is at we hooked up to the ground uh, screw yesterday when we were doing the bed lights so I'm gonna hook all this up and I'll show you guys how it's all wired so Enjoy the time lapse. And there you guys have it, fully custom installed. It's locked in there, it's not going anywhere. It came out pretty clean. I mean, you can see down through it a little bit on the sides, but driver's side, uh, I'm more or less like that it's very clean and very simple. Down below here we got the white ground wire that's coming down from it. It's hooked on to that bolt right there as you can see. Just took that bolt out, put it on. This is for my actual tailgate bed lights. This black cable right here that's crimped on there. Right there's that white wire and then up there is the OEM harness that uh, I just plugged that Deconche harness right into it and uh, all set and ready to go. So as far as the install is concerned, that's all we have to do for the install. So now I'm gonna cut to some footage on a dry day, it's kind of raining right now, when uh, we actually set up the Deconcha. So basically you pull your trailer, there's a, there's a way you set it to make sure you have the right settings for your specific trailer. All right, we'll jump to setting up the actual settings for my trailer, so let's go to that now. But as far as the install portion, we're all done. Alrighty guys, it is a few days later and we're over here picking up my trailer because I gotta go load it up for all of our DJ gear. But first things first, I gotta actually tune the brake controller, the P3, to my trailer. So I'm gonna walk you guys through those steps. Basically, we're gonna go uh, to a flat ground area so that we can tune the braking controller. Uh, but first, I kinda wanted to show you guys my trailer because I don't think I've shown on this channel my trailer. I showed on my DJ channel. Uh, links everywhere to my DJ channel. It's a lot bigger than this channel at the point of filming this video As you can see this is like the trailer parking area here at my apartment complex This dude's got a lot bigger and this dude's got a little bit little bit But this right here is a 6x12 dual axle trailer blacked out Gray to kind of match the truck. It's very very close six on centers three quarter inch floor the upgraded sides I believe it's seven six foot tall ceilings six or seven foot tall ceilings probably six foot LEDs blacked out I yeah I already said that but um right there is the battery for the electric brakes uh, there is my seven pin connector into my Tacoma like I said my Tacoma came with the trailer uh, package so it already had the seven and the four prong 
built already in ready for trailering just got a standard hitch mount right here i'm not really sure what brand it was i can't remember when i bought it i think the trailer company actually provided it for me my chains crossed like normal i'll show you guys a little bit at the end of this video the inside of that i'm really working on modding out my trailer right now i got a few things like some easy track i'll show you guys later uh, the brand on that trailer is spartan by the way so we're gonna go to a dry flat ground area to tune the braking controller. As you can see, we are out at a random parking lot elementary. It's not really a big one, but uh, all we need is a flat dry ground so that basically all we're gonna do is drive forward and then hit the brakes and see if we can lock up the back brakes on the trailer. The P3 recommends, or they're on their videos, they recommend you start at power level six. So I'll show you guys that here in a second. So right here is the Deconcha P3. We're gonna walk through the menu real quick. Up here is your boost level. So with boost level off, you see I'm pushing in on the brake and I have nothing here. So basically that's recommending if you have a single axle trailer to have boost level zero. So if I go to boost level one, this is for your standard uh, dual axle trailers, similar to what I have, probably up to a 14 foot or maybe a 16 foot. Boost level two is your even bigger trailers. These are like your campers, your horse trailers, something with a decent amount of weight and you probably have a 2500 truck pulling this. Boost level three, you're getting to your ginormous 25 foot, 24 foot long ginormous triple axle trailers. So we're gonna leave it at boost level one for my trailer. The bottom button here, this is your menu, so you can go to your display. You can click on your display. You can adjust the brightness, the color. Yes, you can change the color on this to any color you would like. I have mine set on white, which actually is kind of like a light blue. It really matches my interior lighting, so I'm on white. Uh, we can go back here on display you also have your brightness you can set it high medium or low your contrast level and that's it we can also go to brake type mine are electric you can also do hydraulic if you have hydraulic brakes uh, confirm we can also go to help help really isn't much you can go language troubleshootings and contact us so we talked about the boost level we've talked about the menu functions now we're going to talk about our power output so on the left hand side here we have our power output settings so this is what we're going to be working with to basically have the Deconcha learn the power output it needs to operate my trailer so we're going to set the six this is what they recommend to start with below there is the manual override so this is what you do to manually override and actually activate the trailer brakes so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be towing the trailer on a dry level surface, aka here, and we got to get the trailer up to 25 miles per hour or the truck up to 25 miles per hour and activate the manual override. So the goal here is to see if the trailer brakes actually lock up. So if the trailer brakes when we hit the manual override at 25 miles per hour lock up, we got to reduce power. If they spin freely, we got to increase power. The goal is to have it so that it's right below when the trailer wheels lock up at 25 miles per hour. And that'll be our optimal power setting. So this parking lot is actually really small. And uh, now that I realize I gotta go 25 miles per hour, it's not gonna work here, especially when you're pulling a trailer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the local Walmart. Should be plenty of room there to get the 25 miles per hour and hit the brakes. So, like I said, we're gonna be doing, basically we're gonna drive up to 25 miles per hour. We're going to then activate the manual override on the Deconcha P3. And then we're gonna see if the trailer brakes lock up. Let's begin. Let's get up to 25 miles per hour. Do have a decent amount of stretch here to get up to 25. And we are at 25. And the trailer brakes did not lock up. So we're gonna turn around, go back the other way. We're gonna up the power to probably about seven and try again. Go up to 25 and we will manually override. So 25 and manual override now. And they free, they freely spun. They freely spun. No lockup. Up the power again, baby. So now we are at nine miles per hour, and I actually have to put a decent amount of throttle to get this thing up to 25 in this short stretch. 25. A little bit of lockup, a little bit of lockup. So we did lock up a little bit there. I want to do this again, going back the other way and see if we lock up again. I'm going to up it to 10 this time. I think 10 is about where this needs to be, honestly. And 
we have lockup. We did have lockup at 10, so we're gonna lower it down to nine again and see if we get lockup. So after that run, it seems like nine is the sweet spot. I did lock up the brakes partially the first run at nine, but it was on the slowdown. So I was at max braking power and we were down about 50 miles per hour. And obviously the slower you get, the easier it's gonna to be to lock them up. We're not locking up at nine. So I'm gonna try 9.5 just to verify that we aren't locking up at 9.5. We do lock up at 9.5. I know I'm gonna stay at nine. If we don't lock up at 9.5, then maybe I'll leave it at 9.5 and we'll try like 9.7. Uh, but I have the power now set to 9.5. It is a good point to make sure that uh, if you do guys have a brake controller built into your truck or you have a Deconcha like I do, tune your brakes to the trailer. It's very important so that way you have adequate braking in an emergency situation. Okay, so we did lock up a little bit there at uh, 9.5, but not much. We're gonna do one more run at nine down another aisle here where it is nice and dry, and we'll see if we get wheel lock up. Absolutely no lock up, so that is perfect. Nine seems to be the threshold for my trailer. So by default, if you only have one trailer, it's not really a big deal. It'll remember exactly your settings for the next time you open it up. But if you do have multiple trailers and you need to save multiple trailers, you just hold down the boost button and it'll bring up multiple trailers here. So you can select through your trailers. This is trailer one, I'm gonna click okay. So that's how you set multiple trailers. So if I go to trailer two, it'll not have the same settings as trailer one. So let's see how many trailers you could store. You could store uh, five of them. So that's a, that's a lot of trailers, but if you have five trailers, you can store five different settings for five different trailers. So guys, that is a complete wrap on this video. Trailer, P3 braking controller inside of the Tacoma, the Taco, Taco Rick Tacoma by kind of a road here. It's kind of loud, but I just wanted to end the video right here, guys. Thank you guys for the support on this channel. I love doing truck mods. I love doing modifications to vehicles. My truck is like my baby. I might have just placed an order for some 18 inch rims. You might be seeing those coming. I might, so, might have also purchased a three inch lift kit. Might. Oh yeah, before I end this video, I wanted to show you guys the inside of the trailer. So uh, right now it's very barren. I do have a transition piece. This is hinged. Pretty dope. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. And I got Easy Track with some tie downs. I do plan on doing a lot more Easy Track around this. And I also got some tie downs up here. For my DJ equipment, spare tire, uh, I'm probably going to rhino line or bed line the floor. But uh, a lot of modifications need to be done to this trailer. And I've really been neglecting doing them. Hopefully, I'll get around the dorm this summer. But, anyways, outro. So on that note guys, if you are not already subscribed to this YouTube channel to see those rims, to see that lift, I'm going to be installing it all myself. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be dope. Click that subscribe button. If you like this video, if this was helpful for you guys, be sure to click that thumbs up button. And like always guys, like we say on this channel, Taco Rick out. Peace.